All right, welcome to lesson two in week one, uh, what it takes to succeed. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about preparing your mindset. Um, for a lot of people, you might be in this situation as well. You're, you're coming into this from, uh, you know, trying to get out of another job or basically what we call an employee mindset and you, you've perhaps never ran your own business before. So I'm going to talk a lot about um, what you have to do mentally in order to um, get ready to take on this journey. Uh, then we're going to dive into limiting beliefs. Uh, if you don't know what a limiting belief is, don't worry. I'm going to dive into that more in uh, this lesson here. And um, and then how to be massively productive. And uh, we're going to conquer some myths that even myself, I used to believe were helping me be more productive. But in reality, uh, that was not the case. So let's dive into it. So a few truths that uh, you want to come to be aware of and accept early on. And um, yeah, so the first is you're, you're going to face challenges whenever you're trying something new for the very first time. There are going to be roadblocks. There are going to be bumps. Um, some may seem like a little speed bump. Some may seem like it's a mountain. Either way, there will be challenges. And I find that the sooner you accept that and you acknowledge that, when you face a challenge, the easier it is to overcome that challenge because you've just prepared yourself for the fact that challenges will be arriving. Um, you will not get it right the first time. I always fight, find a little crit, fight a little crit, criticism when I tell people, "Don't worry, your your first book might just suck." And uh, a lot of people who don't understand where that meaning comes from um, tend to be like, "Oh, that's so harsh. Why would why would you want to set yourself up for that type of experience?" And I'm not saying that your first book 100 percent is going to suck, but your first book is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be compared to your 10th book. It's not going to be that great. It's going to be good, phenomenal. It'll be it'll be great in the sense of we're not putting out trash or anything like that. But you have to understand done is better than perfect. Right? You're going to make mistakes along the way and your second book will be better than your first and your third book will be better than your first and second and your fourth will be significantly better than your first three combined and so on. So don't beat yourself up that you're making mistakes and you're not getting this right the first time. Um, execution will always beat systems, but si systems save time. Don't get caught in the trap that um, you have to have everything lined up in order to make this work. You don't. Creating action, taking action on what we're going to be going through over the next few weeks, it is that is the single most important thing you can be doing. The worst thing you can do is simply just sit back and try to get everything organized so you have a great system in place, but you're not taking any action. You have to be taking action. You have to be executing on what you're learning. Your book is your greatest marketing tool. And that means that you want to make this as good as you possibly can from the beginning because everything rises and falls on a great book. And the last point is there's always going to be somebody doing better than you another way. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. There's always going to be other people teaching other methods or whatever the case is. What you're going to be going through is guaranteed to work with you if you just follow the program and apply what I've, what you're going to be learning, what I'll be teaching you. Don't get caught up in everyone else's business or whatever the case is. Stay in your lane. Focus on building your business and you will find the success that you want to find. So when I talk about winning the mental game here, um, understand what you're doing first off, first and foremost, right? Are you, are you trying to make money this month or are you building a long-term business? And listen, this was something that I struggled with a lot when I first started publishing back in, in 2016 now. Right, because we were essentially broke and debt and needed money, and I wasn't working. Well, I had a job, but it wasn't really. It, it was not paying the bills, 
And so we really had to make money, money this month. And so I was tempted to take shortcuts and, and uh, you know, do hacks and things like that. But that's not building a long-term business. That's putting a Band-Aid over a broken bone, so to speak. We want to actually fix the problem. And that's what building a long-term business is all about. It's f creating long-term solutions to your problem. And that's what this program's designed to do. It's not designed to make you money this month or even next month. It's designed to help you build a long-term business that creates financial cash flow for years on end. Any skill that you lack, you will and you, uh, you can and you will learn. Um, you know, whether it's, it's keyword research, copyrighted marketing, uh, you know, for me, it was it was design. It was figuring out what makes a good cover design versus a bad cover design. I really struggled with struggled with that in the beginning, but that was a skill I developed over with practice. And you know, with practice comes experience, and you get better at that. And now I feel like I have a fairly confident eye when it comes to cover design. So you don't don't stress over I don't understand this or I don't understand that. You're going to understand everything over time and any additional skills that you have to learn that are vital for this business, like copywriting, for example, that we're going to talk about through this program, you will learn those skills. Will you become an expert in those certain skills? No, because you probably just don't have to with certain things, but you will learn them. And then overcoming your limiting beliefs. And I really want to spend some time right now talking more about what are your limiting beliefs? Um, because this is a big one for, for a lot of, um, for a lot of new entrepreneurs. So what are your limiting beliefs? Um, it boils down to this. It's a, in a, an opinion of yourself that prevents you from progressing in a certain area of your life. So in an opinion of yourself that prevents you from progressing in a certain area of your life, you know, you believe these to be true and thus you view the world through this lens now. And I'm going to show you some examples if you're not quite with me here. All right. So, for example, I am too old or I am too young. I should have started back in, you know, 2004. Right. People who make a lot of money are assholes, are greedy, are manipulative, whatever the case is. Right. No one around me thinks that I can do this internet thing, which which means they are right. I don't have enough time to do this. Once you've identified these, you can overcome them, right? Um, I, I should have started back in blank. This was a big one when I first, and for most people who are starting this space, this is a big one, right? You're, you're thinking, oh, I should have started back in 2012, right? When the whole KDP thing started getting going. Right. But that's that's irrelevant. Thinking about that is only going to hinder your future success now. Right. Also, a you know, people who make a lot of money are a lot of people, lower to middle class individuals or society levels. They'll think this of the the I don't want to say the uber rich. We'll just call them the, the wealthy people. Right. They think, oh, you know, well, they're they're, they're doing well. So they, so they must be assholes. Or they're doing well, so they must have cheated or ripped somebody off or whatever the case is. And people just don't understand. You can do well without making a lot of money. It's just called making fine, sound financial decisions. And this was one I struggled with personally a lot. But it wasn't until I started understanding more about this that my income started growing. So where, where do these come from? Previous experiences? A failed business, perhaps? Uh, maybe you get a bad grade in math. You know, I get a bad grade in math. Oh, therefore I suck in math. Well, that's that's not the case. You don't suck in math just because you got a bad grade in math. You just got a bad grade in math, but you can improve, right? I don't understand new tech. I'm too old to learn this. For years, I used to think with, you know, I grew up video games, right? Um, but the whole online video games, I never got into that. That was something that started after I kind of lost interest in games. And we bought the Nintendo Switch. And I was like, man, this thing's complicated, how this whole online thing works. And oh, I'm just too old for this. Then I just took the time to learn how it works. And I, oh, man, this is easy. 
Now, are there some, you know, 12 year olds that can kick my butt online? 100%. And this is always going to be the case, right? Goes back to what was that, right? There's there's always somebody doing better than you another way, <laughs> okay? Um, but I wasn't too old to learn how to do this, right? So, um, okay, and then, you know, childhood. So some limiting beliefs that might stem from your, your childhood, you know, you're smart, you're dumb, you're athletic, you're great at this. Uh, these are all things that people might have told you or you, you grew up you grew up with being identified as athletic, for example. Great at blank, you know, lazy. <laughs> Do you have ADHD? Are you, are you quiet? Are you shy individual? Does any of that matter right now? No, it doesn't. None of that's, I don't care if you're smart. I don't care if you're stupid. You know, you can be athletic or 400 pounds. You can be great at, doesn't really matter. You can be as lazy as fuck. Excuse the French. You, you know, you could have ADHD. I, it, none of that matters. None of that is irrelevant to what you're doing right now. But it's important to identify these and understand where they come from. Because without taking that step to look yourself in the mirror, take a look at this and say, okay, this is the story I'm telling myself. This is the story I've been telling myself all my life. Thus, this is why I have blank in my life right now or why I don't have blank in my life right now. Until you identify this, you're never going to overcome it and you're never going to get the life that you truly want. Now, limiting beliefs related to this program, okay? I've only made $5,000 per, er, per month, per year, whatever the case is. Therefore, I can only make blank with this, irrelevant. Okay. I don't know how to write a book. Doesn't matter. We we have we solve that problem for you. English is not my first language. I won't understand anything. Doesn't matter. We have tons of students who don't speak English fully. Like you, you gotta, you've made it this far. As long as you've made it this far, you understand what I'm saying. Your English is fine. Um, I have never been good at keyword research before. That's okay. There are no good niches or keywords left. Uh, it's not true. The internet is too saturated to make money with. <laughs> Absolutely not. That, that, that will never happen. I take too long to learn something new for this to work. Well, unless you're going to die in the next month and you know that 100%, no, you, you're not going to take too, you're not going to learn too slowly. You, you'll be okay. I don't have a circle of competence. Circle of competence is a fancy way of saying stuff you know about. We're going to get into the circle of competence a little, in a little bit. Now, this is how limiting beliefs are created, Okay. You know, one, everyone seems to be finding their book topics faster than me. You compare yourself to how other people are doing, right? You know, Donna might be looking at Jane and saying, wow, she's finding her, her book topics so much faster than me. I, I, I'm no good at this, right? But what Donna's forgetting is she's a mother of four, you know, and balancing everything out and whatever the case is. You know, and Jane's like 20 and has like no life other than this. Well, of course, Jane's going to get stuff done faster. She has like zero responsibility. Don't compare yourself to other people. You'll find your topic at your own speed. I can't figure out what my circle of competence is. Book idea. Uh, if I can't figure out what my circle of competence is, I will never get it published. Well, that is correct to in a sense. So we're just going to take more time to figure it out. This question is probably stupid. I won't ask this on a call. This is one of the key things you never want to do. If you think your question is stupid and you don't ask that question, this is the biggest thing that can hinder your success. And myself, due to kindergarten trauma, kindergarten trauma experiences, I don't know what you call them, I, this was something I struggled with all the time. And it held me back so much. Not in terms of like grades or anything, but like in terms of like confidence and and uh, or self confidence and 
um, speaking out in class in a positive way. Um, so do not hold back on any questions. Ask the, the people who ask most questions often find success the fastest. I don't want to share my book because others might laugh on it. Uh, stop caring what other people think. Their thoughts are irrelevant to your success. I won't share in a group because I'm new and still learning. Share in a group because it goes back to that other thing. The people who get involved the most tend to are, are the ones who, who are sharing the most tend to find success the fastest. We're going to talk more about this type of stuff um, in the next lesson, which is how to guarantee your failure. So beliefs are not facts. So understand that. The limiting beliefs that you're figuring out about yourself are not facts. Beliefs are like looking through a stained glass window. You must look past them in order to see the world for what it truly is, right? Those beautiful stained glass windows in churches and, and other places that they have them, right? You're looking through that beautiful window and you might have a fuzzy view of the world or whatever the case is, but that's not what's actually on the other side of the glass. Right, your lens is filtered. We have to remove the filter so you can truly see what the world is like. Right? How you see the world is not a reflection of reality. Here are some facts about me that you may or may not know. One, I didn't hit my I didn't hit ten thousand dollars a month, uh, which for the if you don't understand, ten thousand dollars a month is kind of the unofficial, um, hey, I know what I'm doing with this self-publishing thing um, in the internet marketing space. If you're making $10,000 a month, you officially kind of, you, you know, it's almost like you're, you're out of, you're out of your, your, uh, you're out of elementary school, you're into high school now, if that makes sense. Um, so I didn't hit my first $10,000 a month until I was one and a half years um, into the business already, right? My largest month self-publishing is only $19,000. That's it. Multiple students have, have made so much more than that on a per month basis that have come from this program. You know, I've had many students who hit $10,000 a month before I hit it myself. Um, I'm a proud college dropout with no official background in business. Zero. Math and spelling are not my strong suits. If you've read any of my emails, you'll know that. Um, I've only written one book in my entire life, yet I've published over 80, right? So these are just some facts about me. Um, you know, and here are some facts. Oops, here's some facts about some, some members uh, in the course, right? So we have authors who write their own books and we also have people who hire writers. They're called ghost writers. So we have both, right? So it doesn't matter if you want to write your own book or if you want, if, if you don't write and you have no intention of writing your book, that's okay too. We, we handle both. Um, our youngest mother, youngest member, our youngest member uh, was 17. And the oldest is uh, somewhere in her, her 70s, right? So age doesn't matter here. The highest, quote unquote, highest grossing earner makes over a million dollars per year right now. This is purely on book sales. Now I have highest in quotation marks uh, just because I don't know what everybody makes. So we might have people who are making two or $3 million per year. I just, they haven't confirmed it, but from all of the students that are inside my self-publishing blueprint, you know, this is the highest that I've spoken to on a call. He's making over a million dollars with self-publishing right now. And this is only from his book sales on Amazon. Uh, we have, uh, we have some who have never ran an online or a business before and others with lots of online or just business experience in general. Um, remember, this was my first actual business that I ran myself, um, was my self-publishing business. And we have people who've come in here with tons of experience 
um, in in the business world. And we also have people who who can barely who can hardly speak English, barely speak English. Um, you know, I, I talked about that beforehand. That your level of fluency in, in the English language is not anything that's going to hinder your success um, here here with self publishing. So create a new mindset for yourself is the only way for you to get new results. New results being, you know, the lifestyle or the life that you really won't want to be going after and, li and living. So how do we overcome these li limiting beliefs? We identify them, we reframe them, and then we create new ones. It's a three-step process. So step one is identifying them, right? What are your limiting beliefs? So write these out. That's what I want you to do right, right now. Write out your limiting beliefs. Look at them. Acknowledge them. Literally pause the lesson and get this done. Right now, this is one of the most important exercises that you can be doing in order to get everything flowing the right way for you. Where did these come from? Try to figure out. Think back to your childhood. Think back. Where where did these limiting beliefs come from? Was it some sort of traumatic experience from back in the day? Or was it just something you made up and you told yourself over and over and over again until it became a, a belief in, in yourself? Next, we want to reframe them, right? Is this belief objectively true? Or is it an opinion that you possess, right? People afraid of water, okay? If I go into the water, a shark will eat me, right? We just watched the movie shows, right? That's a limiting belief a lot of people have, fear of the water, right? Or I guess more realistic than a shark eating you is if I go into the water, I'm going to drown. Correct. If you go into the water and you stay in the water too long underneath it, you will drown. That is correct. That is a fact. However, your belief of if I go into the water, I will drown is not a fact. That is an opinion you possess. Right? Because does this belief serve you in your purpose? No, it doesn't. It hinders you. Maybe you want to be spending more time in the water. You like your summers and you would like to spend more time in the lake. Maybe go on a boat, jet ski, whatever the case is. But you can't because of this limiting belief you have about water. Does it bring you closer or further from the ideal life you want? In this case, it's bringing you further away from the ideal life you want. Create new limiting beliefs around success you already have. Have you been in water before? Did you drown? Very simple. If you're thinking about this, your answer is no. Maybe you had a drowning experience or you almost drowned, but you didn't drown because you're alive. All you need to do is find one example that proves your belief to be invalid. Going back to relating to the program, the very fact that you have signed up for this program, that alone means you are a winner taking steps in the right direction. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about increasing your productivity. Okay, productivity just means how can you get more stuff done? That's it. Okay. So the first rule that you have to understand is one, at any given time, you can only give 100% of your focus to one thing, right? You got kids, 100% of your focus needs to be on your kids when you're with your kids. If you want to watch a movie, 100% of your focus needs to be on the movie, right? You're reading a book, 100% of your focus needs to be on the book. Right now, 100% of your focus should be on this lesson and hearing my voice. Anything else you're doing is hindering your experience, okay? Publishing, 100% of your focus needs to be on this business, publishing, right? You cannot start some other online business and expect to get good results by having 50% of your focus on publishing and 50% on some other online business. It will not work. I have seen this happen time and time again you will end up taking much longer to do anything correctly 
than if you were 100% focused on publishing. At any given time, you can only give 100% of your focus to one thing. This circle, if you haven't figured out, represents 100. If you start publishing and then another business and another business and then a fourth business, well, you're not giving 100% of your focus to one of them. It's 25% of your focus to them. The last time I checked, when you're giving only 25% of your focus to a business or even 50%, you tend to get less than that back in results. So what about this business? Well, in the beginning, 100% of your focus needs to be on creating your book. That's it. All this other stuff, getting reviews, running Amazon ads, starting a Facebook group, none of that matters. Right now, you only need to be creating your book. That's what 100% of your focus needs to be on. As you grow your business, though, you will hire people to free up your time so you can spend your time on higher revenue income producing activities, right? That will come with experience over time. Now, figuring out when you're most productive is another really big thing, right? So I've taken kind of a day and broke it up into sections. You got to figure out what, when in the day are you most effective, right? So is it before everyone else is up between 5 and 9 a.m.? Are you the most effective then? right? Is it late morning between nine and 12? Midday, 12 to five, early evening, five to eight, or late at night, eight to 12? There's no right answer for any of these. However, there is a right answer for you. And this is what you have to start working your days around. The time you're most effective is the time you need to be spending on your business, right? Um, I'll show you my schedule here. And this is a schedule I absolutely live by. I change it from time to time, but this is typically the type of schedule I, I work. So um, anytime from about 5.30 to 6 a.m., I'll get up. I'll have my, my 32 ounce bottle of water, right? I'll have that, I'm gonna sip some right now. Uh, I'll have my coffee. And I'll do some, some reading or, yeah, it'll, it'll be reading or I'll watch like an educational video. I, I try not to keep the computer around at this time because then I end up cheating a little bit. So I try to do something that, uh, or I'll listen to an audiobook from my phone because um, I'm going to talk about why in a second. But um, yeah, so that's what I do for the first part of the morning. Um, then, you know, around 6.30 to 7 or so, I'll have my breakfast. Uh, and then I hit the gym. And, uh, you know, I got the gym from, what, 8, 8 8.30 to about 9, 9.30. Um, I'm at the gym. Then I get home, have another meal. Uh, and then I do the most important work. So from about 10 to 12.30 or so. Um, I do the most important work I have to get done for that day. So that is the highest revenue income producing activities I have to get done. Um, so right now as I'm filming, it's creating lessons. It's, it's working on the course. That's it. Anything secondary like my other business, um, YouTube or checking emails or any of that stuff, that comes later. But the most important part of the, my day is, or most important work that I have to get done, gets done in those couple hours, laser focused. Then I have my 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 third meal. Then I get I start doing some busy work. Busy work like checking emails. Um, I'll jump into the the Facebook group to answer questions or uh, those those type of things. Things that have to get done, but they're not important. Right. Then I have my family time. Okay. This is usually where I sit hanging out with the kids for a little bit, have dinner, more family time. And this time I'm, I'm not really working. I might 
you know, get an, you know, get back to some emails still or whatever. It depends if they just want to watch TV or whatever the case is, but I'm not doing anything that requires a ton of mental focus anymore. I've essentially shut off for the day. Uh, meal five, then um, I relax and, uh, and, and then bedtime. Um, 10, 10, 30, should say more 10, like really the goal is to be in bed no later than 10 anymore. Um, this creating a schedule for yourself, um, you basically, you have to treat yourself like you're an employee. If you are not creating a schedule and you have your schedule out where you can see it all the time until it becomes ingrained with you, I have it on my phone. So it'll, I have alarm set to tell me what to eat, tell me what I should be working on. I just, you know, my phone's always beeping at me, tell me what to do, basically. Um, if you are not doing this, you're drastically hindering your, your chances of success. This is having a schedule. It is one of the most fundamental and important things you can do um, for your success when you're running your own business. Uh, there's a reason why when you're an employee, your boss tells you to come in at a certain time. You are your own boss now. You have to tell yourself when to start work, what to work on, for how long, and all of those things, just as if you were working for somebody else. So how do we reduce the distractions, right? Okay, number one is delete all the useless apps from your phone, all of them. God, get rid of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. All of the useless apps you do not need on your phone, get rid of them. I haven't had, I can't remember the last time I had a Facebook app on my actual phone. It's been a long time. If I need to go on a Facebook to go into the Facebook group, uh, it's done on my computer because I'm working. Um, Instagram, I have another business, so I have to have Instagram on my, on my, my, my phone for that business. Um, I don't use Snapchat, but uh, yeah, deleting useless apps frees up your um frees up your mental ability it, it's massive don't become a slave to your phone uh use social media to make money and go see people in real life that's it the only reason i like social media is to make money right i'd much rather go and connect with actual friends in person um and yeah that's what i do or i'll meet people on social media through, through business and go see them Turn off all not notifications. So do not disturb. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. No. Do not disturb. Have do not disturb on your computer so you don't get any notifications at all. So when you're working, you're focused on working. I don't want any notifications. I do not want um, my email to go off and tell me that I have a new message. I want to check things when my schedule says, okay, it's okay to check things. Otherwise, what happens is you're working, you're like, you're in the zone, you've been working for a good 40, 45 minutes, you're feeling great, getting some solid things done. And then what happens? A little email notification starts beeping in your ear saying, come check me, check me. So you stop working, you go check it, you see what it is. You think it's important that you have to respond to it. So you respond to it. Before you know, you see another email. You're like, oh, I should get back to that. Then you see something else. You go, and before you know it, you've wasted a whole hour or two. And now it's going to take you half an hour to get back into the zone of you working. It's a complete waste of time. So turn off all your notifications. Turn off every single notification on your phone. The only time my phone beeps at me is when an alarm goes off or I get a phone call. Other than that, it cannot beep. I've turned off every single notification. I don't want my, I am not a slave to my phone. My phone is there as a tool for me to use. It is not so people can get a hold of me whenever the, they damn well please. YouTube notification, like, I know I don't want YouTube notifications on my phone. No, I don't want, because somebody sent me a message on Facebook that my phone has to say, hey, you got a message from so-and-so that you don't even know who wants to steal some of your precious time. Absolutely not. That's the most ridiculous way to live. Let's turn off all your notifications. Okay, let me show you what the Newsfeed Eradicator is. So this, um, you just Google Newsfeed Eradicator and you're going to have something that pops up like this. 
And when I go on to Facebook, this is all I see. I cannot, I don't see what people are doing in their lives. Um, it's just because who cares? So I just see this. I and it looks like it, it it's a I guess it's a it's um a quote that keeps changing every day. I don't know how often I never read them. But that's all you see when I go into my Facebook. I don't want to see everyone's life and pictures and I just nope. I want to stay focused because when I'm using social media, I'm using it as a tool to get stuff done. So I'll go to my groups that I, I need to go into and um and I'll get the work that I need to, need to get work done. I'm not going to go on there and start scrolling through um, all of this. Now, this is why I deleted Facebook from my phone because this app doesn't work on mobile. I have yet to find an app that allows that to happen on mobile. If I did, then I'd, I'd have the Facebook app on my phone because then I could, uh, I could work from my phone as well in terms of getting into the groups that I need to and, and whatnot. But honestly, I don't mind just, I can type fast on my computer. So Facebook on the computer is a lot easier. Um, YouTube unhook. So when I go to YouTube, so you can just Google um, YouTube, YouTube un, unhook. And now there's a whole bunch of different apps. So unhook right there. So you just, you can add this as a Chrome extension. And now, so when I go to YouTube, this is my YouTube. Isn't it beautiful? This is the homepage for my YouTube. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Now, if I want to watch a video, look what happens. If I, if I, if I, if I watch a video, watch a video here. Okay. T Texas bucket list. What the hell is Texas? You know, this is crap. I don't even want to subscribe to that anymore. I don't even know what it is. So, and if I don't know what it is, I don't even bother subscribing anymore. But as that's loading, look, I only see comments. I do not have the thing of other videos here anymore. And I could go into my, go in and disable it so I can get all the recommended videos and stuff again. But um, yeah, when I go on a YouTube, it's not to scroll constantly for hours. It's to go onto YouTube, search for the type of video I want um, or whatever the case is, watch the video and move on and get off of it. It's not, I'm not six. I don't need to just sit and watch YouTube all day. So very, very key things to have um, YouTube unhook. Uh, and then use bookmarks. You see up here, I have bookmarks, right? Um, so yeah, like I just, I can click on certain things and just instead of typing them out, boom, I just go to exactly what I want to go to. And I don't have to type it out. Just little things like that is uh, is is key. All right. Now, moving on here. I believe this is the last slide, so I'll just hammer through these. Um, some other little tips or hacks on how to be massively productive. So, number one, look, working out in the morning. Go to the gym. Go for a run. Go for a walk. Um, or a form of yoga or stretching, right? Whatever the case is, do something. This reduces stress going into the day. It releases endorphins that promote energy and focus and good decision-making. This is not science, or this is, <laughs> rather, this is science, this is not speculation. So, it like if you're not a gym person, don't go to the gym. Don't, don't start something if you're not gonna enjoy it. Um, or if it's not something you truly want to do, but you got to move in the mornings. This is just, if you look at like, you go to the gym early, go see all the people, the per, people who are at the gym, like five, six, seven a.m. Doctors, okay. Um, they're all high level professionals. That's what I'm trying to get at. Um, it's just, it's no secret that the the jobs that require lots of mental focus these are the ones that are taking care of themselves. You got to take care of yourself. So doing some sort of physical exertion, w whether it's the gym, running, walking, stretching in the morning, even absolute key thing 
for you to do. And you got to do it in the morning. And I'm not talking about two to three hours. Do 20 minutes of stretching. Just stretch for 20 minutes. You will feel light years better after a week of doing that. Stop cooking. Get a meal delivery service. Now, this is key. Um, parents out there, If this is absolutely key. And in most areas, like I'm in Vancouver, this is actually a lot more affordable than you think. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One, you can have meals delivered every few days that are cooked and all you do is warm them up. Okay, that's typically what, that's the service we're on right now. So we have meals delivered every couple of days, we throw them in the fridge and we warm them up as we need, okay? Or <clears throat> you can get a, a, another type of meal delivery service that will give you the ingredients and a recipe and you go ahead and you cook those um, you cook those and create the meals, right? So whatever the, the you know, whatever way you want to do it, this does one a couple things. One, it eliminates your grocery shopping, which is a massive waste of time. And two, it can eliminate your cooking or in the case where you have to still cook, at least you're not thinking about what you have to cook, right? So you're just having everything ready to go. The reason you're doing this is to spend more time with your family or to spend more time building your business. If you're tight on time, let's eliminate some of the everyday things that you have to do. Cooking is one of them. And like I said, when you start doing the math and you calculate how much you're spending eating out and, and grocery shopping versus a meal delivery service, you'll be blown away at how affordable it actually is. The sec or whatever, the next one is getting rid of TV. Um, Cable TV is trash. Cut it off today. Just use Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, or one of the billion others. I think we have like we have Netflix. I think we had Hulu. We might have Hulu because we have Shop or Spotify. I don't know if we still do. We don't use it. Amazon definitely. We have Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, of course. But those subscription services are absolutely key. Then that way you don't waste time with garbage commercials. You can watch what you want, when you want. Uh, it's just, yeah, like cable TV is just just garbage. Don't waste your time with it. Um, you're also going to, this reduces also getting rid of TV. It reduces you sitting on the couch and just flicking through channels, right? Because I'll sit on the couch. I'll go to Netflix and like, I'm like, I don't know what I want to watch. And then I'm like going through it for a few minutes. I'm like, this is stupid. There's nothing I want to watch. And I'll just turn the TV off versus going through channels. Eventually you'll just land on some show and you'll just kind of zone out. But that doesn't actually happen with Netflix. I've noticed, at least for myself. I uh, turn off your phone during business hours. I don't even know where my phone is. It's probably upstairs somewhere. Do not keep your phone with you when you're working. Turn it off, put it upstairs, put it in a different room. Do not have it in the same room as you when you are working. This will change how much, or this will completely, well, what am I trying to say here? This will just make you more productive because you're not checking the damn phone all the time, right? You check your phone more times than you think you check your phone. It becomes a habit for most of us. So don't have your phone around when you're working at all. Eat better food, reduce the crap. This goes back into the first one of working out. If you eat better food, you're going to feel better about yourself. Plain and simple. When you feel better about yourself, you produce better work. Okay? Um, yeah, that's just, that's just the fact of life. Right? It's just, yeah. Hire a housekeeper as soon as you can. Right, having a clean workspace reduce or improves your productivity. Um, you know, housekeepers. I think ours. What? I think we've paid like two hundred dollars for three hour cleaning thing, right? And honestly, depending on how your house is, that you might need that every two weeks, three weeks, whatever the case is. Um, you know, in some places, like you know, in, in when we were down in Mexico, we had one come every every. Oh my God, she was there like four or five days a week. Phenomenal. Always, always have a clean place, right? And you know, depending on where you are financially, that might not be a viable option right now. But this is a goal that you want to have because not doing the dishes 
not vacuuming, cleaning your floors and all of that, and just having somebody else do that will increase your productivity, thus make you more money to cover that and more. Okay, say no more, unsubscribe from useless emails, YouTube channels, and anything else that's not related to what you're currently building. Right, you, you saw me do that quickly on one of my YouTube accounts. Write down what you're working on tomorrow and finish it. Don't take calls, text, or be on social media while you're trying to complete that one task. Shut down all tabs except the one you're working on. And then multitasking. Don't listen to podcasts while you're working. Multitasking is a lie. Stay focused, right? Just multitasking is a lie. I don't, if you want to get into that, you can Google that. But listen, when you're working on your business, work on your business. There are certain times I listen to music or certain times I'll listen to an audiobook or something educational, right? If I'm going for a short drive, it's music because mentally I'm, I don't want to get into the whole, write the book or whatever the case is. If I'm going for a longer drive, say 20 minutes or longer, yeah, I'll throw on a book, hammer through a chapter or something like that. Or I download some of the YouTube videos, the educational ones I want to listen to. I'll throw those on. Um, I'm at the gym. It'll change depending on how my mood is. Usually it's it's probably 80% music to 20% um, educational learning, right? It all depends on how I'm doing with, uh, with my working out routine. But uh, you have to find one that works for you. Just when you are working though, just be working and don't be, you know, don't be uh, doing anything else. I actually use white noise when I'm working. If you, I'll just go to YouTube. Go to YouTube and then white noise. And, you know, it's just, I just play this. Yeah, that's my favorite. Or this one. Either one of these. They're all the same. And it's literally, I put my headphones on and it's this. Just that. Hopefully that came through in the recording, but I'll just listen to that and I'll put my headphones on. No, but you can't actually hear anything else outside of it. So because I have the kids upstairs, homeschooling music classes and all that fun jazz, I'll put my headphones on and I'll only listen to that, hear that. And I literally, I cannot hear anyone else. I can't, they can come to my office door and knock on it. I can't hear it. Um, so that's how focused you need to be when you when you're working so anyways um like i said this lesson is key super important um if it was a lot go back through it re-listen to it take notes really understand what are your limiting beliefs identify them and let's recreate new ones and um yeah other than that this lesson is wrapped up and i will see you in the next one